Hey YouTube. So this is a, another video I'm putting together on HIV phobia and anxiety and managing them. Um, I have been more than eight months uh, since potential exposure. Um, after 90 days, uh, it's considered conclusive. I had those results. But something interesting happened to me. Over the last two days, I started feeling sick. Uh, went to urgent care last night, sinus infection. I've been dealing with allergies pretty severely um, these past couple weeks, months actually. And I've ended up with another sinus infection. Um, obviously I was greatly concerned about that. Uh, so it started to play on my anxiety. It really did. And by this morning, I had literally fallen backwards on my progress on my mental of my mental health. So what I did was I got tested. So I went and got tested again today. Negative. Again negative. And the reason why I think it's important is because with all the progress I've made, I think in the last video I said that this would have been my last one. With all the progress I've made with meditation, Tai Chi, speaking with my counselor, um, researching through the appropriate means, you know, like current data, with my understanding of U equals U, with my understanding of transmission and um, the likelihood of transmission, um, with all of that, you know, uh, understanding what the CDC has put out, understanding what's recognized in other countries, like, for example, in Hong Kong, you know, after 14 days, they're considering those tests conclusive. I've received so many messages from people that are really suffering right now. Some feel alone, others feel like they, they're this special snowflake. And if you haven't checked out any of Jennifer Vaughn's videos, go check her out on YouTube. She's a HIV positive, amazing, strong woman. Um, she pretty much has covered her whole, since the time of exposure up until now, what her life is like. And she lives a normal life, you know, she has zero restrictions. Um, go check her out, tremendous, just tremendous person. Anyway, um, so much I've learned from her, so much you can learn from her. If you're watching my video, that's where the buck needs to stop, it needs to stop with her, um, because she's an incredible uh, wealth of knowledge and information. Anyway, so even knowing all this stuff, this by, I, by this morning, I was looking up, I was watching her videos again for some type of reassurance. Things that I already know, um, facts that I've already double checked, I still found myself in this situation. So it's a mental health issue. It's a control issue. It's an anxiety issue. That's what it is for me. I mean, I have a fairly dangerous job, you know, and I don't stress and have angst or fear over things that can actually kill me. And, but with this situation, um, even having all the knowledge, it's where I, there is a foothold for me that really, really has um, carved out and changed who I am at, at my core. So go get tested if you're worried about HIV. It takes a half hour. You know, you get the rapid test, you're sitting there in the chair, they poke your finger, they put it on the, the uh, fourth gen test strip, carry on a nice conversation with the technician and in 30 minutes, honestly, it's a lot faster because the um, 30 minutes is what they recommend, but within, I'd say about 10 minutes, the solution has already moved through the stages and you'll already start to see lines if you are um, HIV positive. So uh, just go get tested. It's really the best way. So here I was starting to digress, starting to feel bad. Uh, the anxiety was coming up and I went. I just went and got tested again, came back negative. Now the reason why I didn't wanna get tested again today was because I felt like it was a step in the wrong direction. The reason why I'm glad I tested today, because today's test, unlike many of the others, the anxiety while waiting for the results was not nearly as bad. One, because I'm educated. I was able to talk to, this time, an educated technician who knew everything I knew, and that was very comforting. Um, so that was, that was one part of it, and it was a realization that I'm starting to own this more, that even if... I was ever HIV positive, that it doesn't mean my life is over, that it doesn't mean, um, you know, yeah, it means things change in the traditional sense that, well, once I wasn't, now I am, 
But other than that, that's it. Life carries on as normal. As long as you're on your, your medication, you take that one pill a day. Um, so trusting your results is important. Understanding that the window period is 90 days to be considered conclusive here in the US. Other countries, they say they consider you conclusive after 14 days of a potential exposure. And why that is, is because the virus does not hide um, in your body. You start creating, generating antibodies. And do not misunderstand that whole 10 year window period, you know, eight to 10 years before you start seeing symptoms. That doesn't mean eight to 10 years before you test positive. That means that someone can have the virus and not have any symptoms, never get sick, and they does not mean that they're not gonna test positive because at some point they got a little sick and their body generated antibodies. All right, so that's what the test is testing for, the antibodies, unless you get like the Western bot test, um, which I've never, I've never actually gotten. And that's, such, that's checking for viral load, if I, if I know, if I've got that right. So um, go get tested, know your status, practice safe sex, stay away from needles, um, try not to get poked accidentally. Um, know what high risk categories are. It's male on male. Uh, female to male transmission is really low. You know, there was just an article out by um, is Prince William, one of the princes, anyway. Um, and he's talking to a soccer player, a very famous soccer player who just came out that he's HIV positive. Anyway, in that situation, they talk about high risk and that's male on male, it is what it is. You know, but there's things that those they can do as well with like PEP or PrEP. Um, that's really going to, if they're on that, I mean, the chances of them contracting the virus is like some to numb, none. Um, but I understand that just because someone's taking PEP or PrEP, that doesn't mean that they're like s s sexually promiscuous, sleeping with anything that comes through the door. That just means that you're taking your sexual health, you're taking control of your sexual health. It's no different than wearing a condom, right? Um, that's all that is. And obviously that is, that's away from my situation, kind of what I went through, what, what my initial exposure, my potential exposure may have been. But in the process of growing and learning about HIV, I've learned so much about so many different things and it, it has helped me in the long run. Um, so that's it, just a short video. I haven't been on for a while. Like I said, I'm trying to slow down the videos because I was doing so much better. Um, I was gating myself back. I'll never be who I was before. And that's a good thing, you know, because I had a lot of other issues that I've been able to work out with the counselor. And again, go seek a counselor. If you're looking for online counseling for YouTube and stuff like that, it may get you over the hump, but it's not gonna get you to win the war. You may win the battle with that, that one night, but you're just gonna be looking for other fights tomorrow. You gotta get a counselor so you could really eventually win the war on this. And you could take control of yourself again. It's a mental health issue. Um, be cognizant of that. Fight against the stigma, because it really, for those of you that are suffering debilitating fear with HIV, that's what it is. It's a stigma where you think that you're dirty and, and you're not. It's just, it's a chronic condition now is what it is. It's a manageable chronic condition. No different than diabetes. No different than uh, if you are dealing with like a, a fung, you know, I know some folks that are an antifungals and they have to take it for the rest of their life, a pill for the rest of their life. It's really no different. You take a pill a day and you live a normal life, um, a full life, you know, it is what it is. Instead of wrapping yourself up in this fear and losing so much precious time, um, you could be doing something else. Understand that it's, the root of it is not the fear of HIV, the root is something else um, that only counseling can, can help you repair, learning the tools. And you may not have access to counseling, which is pretty crummy. Um, uh, you may not have, be able to afford a counselor, which is pretty crummy. These things happen. Um, but there are there are things that you can do, people you can talk to, just take some research. So research those things instead of what HIV rash looks like. You know, Research things that are actually gonna take you to the next step because looking at hundreds of photos of what rashes and what oral thrush look like are not gonna solve anything. And understand, that's like late stage stuff. That means like you're almost like you're getting a pneumonia, like you're gonna be really, really ill, okay? And it's not like you get one thing. You, it doesn't happen like that either. You just get really, really sick if your viral load starts getting out of control, um, which is when most people find out that they are HIV positive. Some people never think, oh, this wouldn't happen to me. Know your status by getting tested. It's really, it's really that, it's what it is. It is what it is. You gotta get tested to know your status. Um, and 
if you message me, I'm always pretty good at responding to your messages. I'm sure you've seen that. Um, I want you to know that you, you know, are not suffering with this pain alone. But at the same time, read through some of the comments that I already have posted, because I find that I'm addressing the same questions over and over. Sometimes you just want something fresh. You want to hear it in your own way. Go ahead and pose your question. I'll answer the same way. But it is what it is. Uh, 90 days you're considered conclusive according to the CDC. In some countries, they're saying after 14 days, you're considered conclusive. Like in Hong Kong and China, you know, you're considered conclusive of 14 days. Um, you cannot diagnose based on symptoms. You just can't. You will generate so many symptoms with your anxiety. Physically, physical symptoms. Understand that. It will happen. So... I'm also not Scottish, I'm just wearing a, my handkerchief because I have a sinus infection, and which led me to this whole thing. So, um, that's it, that's all I got. Hopefully, uh, it's a help uh, for those of you out there, and good luck on your journey.